so now we come to uh, a simple problem slightly different from the previous one uh, this i am calling as a skateboard system you must have seen uh, boys on skateboards boys or girls on skateboards and there is a skate uh, under their feet and uh, they just uh, hop from one surface to another following the contour of the surface the shape of the surface now if you are to look at this uh, from a simplified perspective from a one dimensional perspective you can see that the surface uh, if it is a rigid surface uh, it is going to impose a motion on the skateboard uh, and this end of the skateboard uh, it's going to transmit the motion to the main mass of the person uh, and the transmission is going to be done through this spring damper combination the mass uh, over here we'll consider it lumped as m1 now in this in this uh, system how are you going to model this system so first of all we will start with the motion of this mass we represent it using a one junction we call this as a, a flow mapping approach because we are starting with the motions we are uh, starting with the velocities which are flows okay? and we will have a kinematic relationship between the velocities so we have this velocity of the mass given by v1 we assign the mass the inertia of the mass to it given by i element with parameter m1 and then uh, we also have this force which is uh, it could be the force of gravity although it's shown upwards in this case it's just representing conventional positive direction so this is just a source of effort uh, f of t which is acting it could change with time that's the reason why it has been shown here like this uh, we also have uh, the other end over here uh, moving with the velocity v not of t okay which is the velocity at the lower end that is the velocity at the skateboard end and here this velocity is actually imposed by this road profile so here we will have to impose this motion impose this flow so naturally we will have to bring in a source of flow so this source of flow is acting on this it's providing this motion okay now we will see how to model this spring damper combination so for this spring damper combination uh, for this spring damper combination we know that the relative motion across the ends is going to be common for the spring and damper elements so we'll have to take the relative motion across these ends so we'll do that we need a flow summing junction which is a, a zero junction and uh, this flow this velocity will be equal to this velocity v1 minus v0 so this velocity will be available we'll make it available at a one junction because it's going to be common to this c and r elements so you assign so v1 minus v0 so we assign this velocity here uh, to the c element and this r element it's common this one junction indicates that it's a common flow junction so now we have the structure of the model before us uh, we can number the bonds so we are numbering the bonds and um, bond number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you see uh it's a random uh, numbering 
process. Uh, I have uh, just uh, taken care to see that the elements are numbered, the C and I elements are numbered first. Uh, but you need not have any particular order for this numbering. In fact, uh, even numbering is not essential. You can give labels or names to these bonds. Okay, they just have to be identified. They just have to be labeled so that the bond is identifiable. The next is once you have numbered the bonds, we'll start with the causality. So we start with the causality of the sources. So here we have uh, the source of uh, effort, applying an effort, determining the effort at this end. Uh, then we have a source of flow here. So this is also imposing flow on this one junction. Now on this one junction, only one bond can bring in flow. So the other bond has to accept it. Uh, well, up till here it's OK, but we uh, now can't proceed further with uh, this much of information. So we'll have to causal the next I or C element. So we causal the I element next in its integral causal form. So in the integral causal form, the I element takes effort and provides flow as an output. A flow has come into this one junction. So all the other bonds have to respect it. So this bond has to bring in the information of effort into this one junction. It can't bring in flow. Now you look at this zero junction. Two bonds are bringing in the information of flow. This bond has to bring in the information of effort. On this one junction, one bond has brought in flow. It's a common flow junction, so the other two bonds have to accept that flow. The uh, causality is complete now. Now we have to identify what are the states associated with this system. I told you earlier also that it's the I and the C elements, the storage elements, which contribute states to the system. So here you have momentum, momentum of this mass, the variable associated with this I element, that is the first state. And here you have Q2, which is the extension or the deformation of this spring uh, K. And we have this variable Q2, which is contributed by this C element. So these are the only two, the only two uh, state variables that are contributed by uh, these elements. Uh, so this system is just a second order system. It's slightly different from the previous one. Uh, earlier we had this end fixed, but now this end is able to move. OK, now let us try to derive system equations for this system. So we will start uh, the procedure for deriving system equations is exactly the same for any problem, howsoever complicated it may be. So we have the first question. What do the elements give to the system? OK, so all these elements. What do they give to the system? We start with the sources. So first is what is this giving to this? It is giving effort so effort 3 effort 3 is actually f of t okay this f of t could be provided by the user uh, it could be any function it could be anything whatever depending on what is the nature of the force that you are applying on it the next is what does this give to this system it gives flow 4 and you can see that it is the uh, profile uh, velocity. So V naught is the velocity of this end and it is being imposed by this profile on it. So it's a source of flow. Then what does this I element give to this system? You can see it gives flow, flow one, and that is in terms of its states and momentum it is p1 upon m1 momentum upon mass is the velocity which is the flow 
in the bond one. Next is <coughs> what does this element give to the system? Effort of flow. You can see the causal stroke is here. It gives effort to the system. So effort two, effort two is K into Q two. Okay, so you have got uh, these uh, questions answered, but you still have this R element. So what does it give to this system? Effort of flow. You can see the causal stroke is here. So this is giving effort to the system. Effort five. We'll write it here. Effort five. Uh, if it's a linear viscous damper, it is just R into flow five. OK, it's a linear damper. So R into flow five. And. Uh, we don't know flow five. But if you look at this uh, over here, you can see that this flow five is coming from this one junction. Information of flow is coming from this one junction. If you look at the causal causality pattern. And what is bringing in this flow into this one junction is the bond seven. So flow five is the same as flow seven. So you can see that flow five is actually flow seven. Now flow seven is coming from this zero junction. Flow seven is flow six minus flow eight. So we'll write flow seven is flow six minus flow eight. And flow six and flow eight. Flow eight is the same as flow four. Flow six is the same as flow one because it comes from this one junction which is brought in by bond number one. So we know both of them. So flow six is the same as flow one. And flow eight is the same as flow four. You can see here that flow one has already been worked out over here as P1 upon M1. And flow four has been worked out as already V0. It has been provided earlier. So if you write this in terms of all the known variables and parameters, it is just R into P1 upon M1 minus V0 of T. Okay. So you have got the first question answered for all uh, the elements of this system. Now we proceed to the next step in this algorithm. That is what does the system give to elements with integral causality? Okay. So for this, we have only two elements with integral causality, one I element here and one C element here. So first is what does this element, what does this system give to this element? Effort of flow. You can see the direction of the, uh, the causal stroke here. So the effort is being received by this I element. System is giving effort to it. And this effort is effort one. In terms of its state, it can be written as rate of change of momentum. P1 dot. So effort one is P1 dot. OK. Now this effort one is coming from this one junction. Through summation. It's an effort summing junction. So we'll, we'll trace out from where it is coming. Effort one is equal to effort three. Minus effort six. OK, so we'll write effort one as effort three minus effort six. Effort three is already known here. Effort six is the same as effort seven. OK, so we'll write it. Effort six is the same as effort seven. If you look at effort seven, it is coming from this one junction. OK, effort seven is effort two plus effort five. So effort seven is effort two plus effort five. So we have answered 
this question for this i element for this first i element we have answered this and we can write this f2 is already known to us k into q2 and f5 is already known to us as r into this so we'll just make the substitution and write uh, f3 as f of t minus f6 which is k into q2 minus r into this bracketed term here so we have got the first equation and now we will ask the sa the same second question to this c element what does the system give to this element with the integral causality is it a flow or effort you can see from the causality it is providing flow to this c element so flow to in terms of its state can be written as q2 dot so flow to is equal to q2 dot and q2 dot is actually this flow to is coming from flow 7 from this one junction being brought in by flow 7 and you know what flow 7 is you have already worked it out earlier so flow 2 is same as flow 7 and that is p1 upon m1 minus v0 of t so you know the second equation also p1 dot equal to this one is the first equation and q2 dot equal to this is the second equation okay so uh, we have outlined both of them we have identified we have outlined them you can see that in these equations the derivative of the state is on the left hand side and on the right hand side you have states p1 q2 okay or p1 you have on the right hand side you have states and parameters parameters like k m r f of t v not t okay so the right hand side is completely known so this is how you are getting the derivative of the states it is telling you how the states are changing with respect to time okay now once you have these two equations you can specify the initial conditions and you can numerically integrate these to obtain the simulation for the system to see how it behaves 